Hello and welcome to Techie Chap. In today's episode, I thought I would look at five Linux applications that you may or may not have heard of before. However, these applications I found to be really useful. So the first application we are going to be taking a look at is something called Bitwarden. Now, Bitwarden is something for managing your passwords. And before this, I had used LastPass for password management. Uh, however, um, it, to get to the level that I wanted to um, control LastPass with mobile devices uh, and my computer, um, I needed to pay a license fee. So I looked around for something that was free and recommended by security experts and Bitwarden came up. Now, Bitwarden is free, very easy to set up. Uh, you get functionality uh, across your computers and your mobile device as well. And that's, that's great. And I just find Bitwarden is a really, really good thing for managing your passwords. This is what it looks like uh, within Bitwarden. As you can see, you can keep all your usual passwords and credentials in there and it puts a nice little logo there of the uh, site that you're trying to get to and you can put the URL as well within Bitwarden so that you can just go into Bitwarden and then click on the URL and you are taken to the website you're trying to get to. So yeah, Bitwarden I think is a really good password manager and the fact that it synchronizes across the cloud and you can take it with you um, on your mobile device as well and obviously there are so many things needing passwords uh, nowadays all right so the second one is flameshot and um, flameshot is one i've recently uh, come across and what it is is a uh, screenshot tool um, and they've got a nice little demonstration here on the website so you can see some of the functionality but essentially those uh, circular buttons around the outside allow you to do various functions um, it means you can take a screenshot you can annotate it you can highlight with different colors you can draw on it there's little arrow uh, symbols you can put on there it's a really useful tool for taking screenshots and uh, probably one of the most powerful screenshot tools I've come across. It doesn't just allow you to make a selection, um, it actually uh, allows you to edit within that selection as well. So I think um, Flameshot is a fantastic tool and one of the nice things as well within Flameshot is you can upload it directly to the cloud so you can upload it directly to your uh, Google Drive if you have Google Drive or any other uh, cloud environment you might have so I've installed Flameshot here and uh, as you can see Flameshot immediately drops down to the uh, task panel at the bottom there uh, I'm using Linux Mint in this demonstration and uh, here you can see I'll um, just take a screenshot and there we go and these are some of the uh, options and menu items you get when uh, you uh, use a uh, flame shot um, you you do really have quite a variety of tools uh, at your disposal uh, within the flame shot screenshot tool tool so yeah it's it's a, it's a great little great little tool okay third on the list is Tauen music Box. I think that's the way it's pronounced. Tau on, Tau on Music Box. And this is also uh, an application that I think is a, a relatively new music application. It's one that I came across when I installed Elementary uh, and I found that the uh, music player in Elementary was a bit uh, lackluster. Uh, so I went hunting around for a new uh, music player and uh, Tauron was the one I eventually settled on. There was a bit of a battle between Tauron and Rhythmbox, but I do like uh, the way Tauron works. It's especially useful, obviously, if you have 
uh, local uh, music collection on your Linux box. Obviously, you can also download uh, clients like Spotify, etc. if all your music is cloud-based. But for myself, who's been around for a bit and has a local uh, music collection that I own, um, that I find this to be a really good uh, music uh, manager. And I like the way that it automatically uh, finds the the thumbnails of the albums that you get information on the artists as well um, one of the things downsides of it is the way it appears whilst looking fairly modern doesn't necessarily fit in with the rest of the desktop it kind of has a, a windows uh, 10 kind of feel or vibe uh, about this particular uh, player but it it does work really, really well. I think it's uh, a great little um, music player. So Tauon Music Box, really, really good. Okay, and fourthly on the list, we have Vocal. Now, if you listen to podcasts uh, and uh, you enjoy listening to podcasts and maybe you're missing that itunes store podcast feature if you've in particular moved away from an apple mac then vocal really is a handy little podcast manager some of these uh, music uh, tools have podcast uh, management built in and you c if you know the url you can put the url of the podcast and that's all great but what i like about vocal is it gives this nice uh, library of um, podcasts that you can just navigate visually uh, and then you just click the plus sign to add that podcast into your collection and subscribe to it and I really like that it kind of reminds me of uh, the podcast management uh, within iTunes uh, in that it's very user friendly and uh, very sort of one click and you're there sort of thing. Um, and if you if your podcast that you're looking for isn't in uh, the iTunes top 100 podcast then you can uh, do a search for the podcast name uh, and it will bring that up and navigating the podcast itself is really easy to do uh, once you've subscribed you have access to all the podcasts uh, available so I think vocal is a very underestimated tool uh, for those who like podcasts Finally on the list, we have a paint tool called Pinter. And actually, it's not just a paint tool, but it is also a, an image editor as well and supports layering. So it has a lot more functionality than your basic paint tool. And I'll just uh, show a, a little demo here. You can see all the tools on the left hand side. They're fairly concise. They kind of are all the things generally you would need then you have the effects so you've got a number of effects built in uh, within Pinter I find this to be a really useful uh, little application for editing photos on the fly or for quickly diving into a photo and doing a quick edit on there it's it's actually really good and really functional and also if you need to create a, a quick image and you don't want to have to dive into a more complex tool like GIMP, then Pinter is a really useful tool for that as well. And I'm just demonstrating some of uh, the functionality of Pinter there. So we're going to turn my cat Ella into an oil painting. I'm sure she would love that. So there we go. Um, and uh, I think I think actually it works quite well. It does work uh, pretty pretty well it's um it's quite a nice tool uh, and obviously of course you can do adjustments so if you have a photo and you need to adjust the lighting um we'll just take a look at that so we've, we've got the uh, you can set auto level posturize sepia you can turn it into a black and white photo and like i said there are also layers so pinter is a fantastic uh picture and image manipulation tool.
So that's my five applications that you've possibly never heard of but could be very useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have then please click on like and subscribe. Otherwise I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.